Welcome to Dodgers Daily. Casey Porter here. So glad that you decided to tune in. Fans, tonight we have a very, very, very special guest. Play-by-play voice of the Dodgers, Tim Neverett, joins for the second time here on Dodgers Daily. I know you're very busy, Tim. This is a huge honor for me. Not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous getting to talk to you. I'm a, a lot excited, though, so thank you for joining. Uh, anytime. Happy to do it. Hey, first of all, I wanted to congratulate your son, Matt. I actually got to meet him in the Oklahoma City press box oh a couple of months ago what a wonderful young man i'm sure you're so proud he has been doing the las vegas aviators for quite a while he's been one of their play-by-play guys but he became the voice of the unlv rebels congratulations to that right yeah pretty happy for him he's excited and uh, he just found out he's going to be doing basketball as well he's getting ready for this friday's game uh, football game with syracuse so uh, they they have like four or five Friday night games in prime time. They're the only game on. So it was a good bit of scheduling, I think, by them. Uh, they're going to stay in the Mountain West, though. Uh, made more sense for them to do that. So that's where they're going to be. And I think with, uh, from what I'm reading, with a goal of trying to get into the Big 12 at some point in time down the line. Oh, that would be nice. But right now, they're just going to stay put where they are. But he's, he's really happy and excited and uh, I'm actually heading over there for that game Friday and, and, and go see him and see him call a football game. Dodgers won 98 games, of course. It was a great season, but it seemed like it was one landmine <laughs> after the other. I know every team has their own issues, but it seems like the Dodgers had more than than their fair share. Now, nobody feels sorry for the Dodgers. They still had a great roster at all times, but you had a first-row seat to that. What was it like for you to get to see this season? Well, every day you go into a game and you expect to see them win. Uh, the pitching that they have – if everybody's healthy, I don't know how they would lose. <laughs> but, yeah. But at the same time, it's baseball. Things happen. Guys get hurt. You're expecting guys back that didn't make it back. Um, I, I just think that, you know, even with position players, you know, Mookie Betts went down. That hurt a lot. I mean, I, he missed 40-something games. Max Muncy missed considerable time. Uh, but they're both back, and they're both healthy now. So, uh, you know, that's just part of – organizations that like to win and try to win you have depth you have depth in the organization and they had enough depth to keep themselves afloat and no matter what happens though over 162 game season you know fans of the dodgers just like fans of any team whether it's who knows what cleveland cincinnati baltimore whoever they really get upset when the team loses now you got to understand when you're there every day and around a club every day they're going to lose games they should win you're yeah. going to win games they should lose. Yeah. They kind of even out, and sometimes those bad losses get magnified, and people go, oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. Oh, the, the sky is falling, and the world's about to end. So, uh, But but it's not. Um, the Dodgers still won the division. It took them a little longer than they had hoped, but uh, they took care of that. Uh, watching Shohei Otani and his – his work all week was in, uh, not all week, but his work all season was incredible. And they hope that in his first postseason, that'll carry over because he's been not only a catalyst, but he has been an absolute monster at the plate. Um, but there were just so many good moments. I mean, you know, just in a 17 day stretch toward the end of the season, they hit three home runs back to back to back in games in 17 days. And one time in Arizona, they did it to lead off a ball game. That's crazy. Yeah. I'd never seen that before. You, know, you got a guy with a 50-50 season. No one's ever seen that before. Um, you know, so so many things have happened over the course of the season. So, you know, games back in April, they obviously mean something when you get to September. But watching this team day in and day out has been, you know, really, really a highlight because, uh, you know, hey, 98 wins is still really good. 100 win seasons, not everybody gets them, but the Dodgers have been lucky to spoil their fans with multiple 100 win seasons mm-hmm. over the last several. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to back up just a little bit. You mentioned some of the depth the Dodgers had to rely on to get to those 98 wins. And I wanted to, to commend you on your job you do all the way back in spring training. I know I sent you a message way back when. You probably don't remember that. But nobody does a better job than you do knowing who these prospects are in spring training. And I can tell you with my side, I'm, I'm heavily uh, I'm heavily covering the prospects. That's what I do here at Dodgers Daily for the most part. I got a bunch of comments about how, how much people really enjoyed hearing you talk about the prospects, their backgrounds. I got them from family members, from fans. So, hey, I wanted to commend you and thank you for your great work on the, the prospect talk in spring training. I appreciate that. That's uh, 
that's the first season, right? So mm-hmm. that's the way I look at it is you have your spring season and then you get into the regular season. And it's important to know what's going on with the prospects in the organization. You know, with Detroit winning over Houston, I'm looking at Trey Sweeney and I remember talking to him and I'm thinking this guy's probably going to see some time in the big leagues this year. I didn't know it was with the Tigers. I thought it'd be with the Dodgers. Uh, but but it's important to know uh, know who these guys are, and, and I'll make my way around the clubhouse a little bit here and there, and I'll I'll grab a minute or two with with some of these guys, and um, you know if I can see them on the field. But you, that work starts, and you know usually after Christmas, you start working on the prospects. Uh, you know I get the information from the Dodgers who they expect, and then I work with uh, actually I, I, I'll tip you off to a secret i i work with danny lehman the bench coach oh nice for the first couple of games he'll tell me what the changes are going to be and who's there and then i figure it out from there nice um you know who are the guys they're planning on looking at because he's he's the guy who puts the lineup card out so he'll tell me in the fifth inning you know he and i will talk about it before the game and he'll give me a clue as to who they are so it helps me out at, at you know at, at those times of the day um but in terms of, of preparation and talking about the prospects, it's so important because uh, when you look at the guys in Double A and the guys in Triple A, this is the future. A lot of these guys are the future of the ball club, and we're going to see guys continue to move up. And we've seen it this year. You know, I mean, Landon Knack. Here's a guy who's going to be pitching in the postseason, right? You got, um, you know, the one guy I was really, really, really heartbroken for was River Ryan. Yes. Uh, when we saw him um, uh, first pitch. Just really impressed. Yeah. Totally impressed. So, oh, wow. This guy's got a good future. <laughs> Liked a lot of the stuff that he did, and then he got hurt. Uh, so hopefully he comes back strong and is a big part of the Dodger uh, pitching plan in, in years to come. Well, unfortunately, we're going to miss him for uh, next season. But, uh, you know, you, you just go up and down the list, and you know who the guys are who are going to do really well. Uh, some guys who probably deserve a chance. I've, I've always said that uh, Drew Avens deserves a chance. Yeah. Uh, to to get in a big league game because he, he just tears it up, you know he just does what he does and uh, he's he's a I think he's a good good guy. Good, he'll be a good teammate if he gets a chance somewhere, whether it's with the Dodgers or somebody else. But I think you know he's a guy that I really came to enjoy watching play the last several springs and just saying okay, well he seems to be on track and he's doing all the right things. Uh, I'd like to see him get a chance sometime at, at some point in time. But you know who knows? I mean Andy Paez. Right. Oh, he mm-hmm. just came and, and, and flew past everybody else. He did have to go back down, but that helped him because he's hitting the ball really well right now. Uh, you know, seeing James Altman get up for the last regular season game, seeing him get back and seeing him named a PCL all star, uh, which is you know great for great for James. You know, so a lot of these prospects, you, you got to try to get to know them and know what they're about. And, uh, you know, Rick and I are able to talk about them on the air. And, you know, it's I think one of the, the worst things you can do as a big league team announcer is during spring training after the fifth inning when they make the changes is just start talking about something yeah, else because it's important I agree. it's important that these these players are recognized and important that the Dodger fans know who these guys are uh, and that we not say ah oh, just some minor leaguer out there wearing number 90 no it's not how that works you know it's it's important to them and they're important to the organization well I was super impressed just hearing the depth of which you went into uh, they're, you know, whenever they're on, on the mound or at the plate or whatever, it was just very impressive, and it was exciting to listen to. So you mentioned him, Rick Monday. I'm so jealous of you because this dude's like a baseball treasure, man. I mean, this guy has every experience you could possibly uh, want to have in the game. He's able to express it just in an elegant type of way. He's very straightforward, but he is just an absolute treasure. You get to listen to Rick Monday three hours a day talk about baseball. How about that? And you get paid to do it, right? Yeah, it's, it's more than three hours, believe me. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, when we get to the ballpark, it's usually around the same time. We both like to get there early. Uh, we eat dinner together. Uh, sometimes he drives me home. Uh, we commute together when we uh, – like for the Korea games, we didn't go to Korea. We had to do it in our TV studios. We drive back and forth. So we live about four, blo- four or five blocks apart. Nice uh, in LA. You know, sometimes when we get home late from a road trip, he'll drop me off. Uh, so we we commute together also. So we spend a lot of time together. And I'm pretty fortunate. And I was having a conversation with somebody this morning about him, 
And I said, you got to understand this guy, he played on the same field with Roberto Clemente. He was yeah. on the same all-star team with Mickey Mantle. Right. So you think about the, the number of years in baseball that he has, you know, transversed. He, he is uh, just a wealth of knowledge and encyclopedia. He's got great stories, uh, but he knows the game. And the other thing about it, too, a guy like him and his status, he could just show up, start talking about the game, but he doesn't. Right. You know, he prepares when he gets there. He opens a scorebook and you can see that during the day he's been doing a lot of work digging into the numbers uh, he loves the grind of a 162 game season. He takes a little time off now around the All Star break, just to, just a series or two. But other than that, he's there every day, um, and and he works hard at it. And uh, you know he's not he's not 30 years old anymore. So even at his his age or his experience, he still really works at it every day. And and that's the fun part for me to see is that. He's a guy who could come in there and mail it in and no one would know, to be honest, but he doesn't do that. Without divulging too much information, which obviously you won't and you can't, but hey, we, you mentioned that that everybody expects the Dodgers to win the NL West. We've kind of gotten spoiled with that. But with going and getting Shohei Otani, of course, Glass now is not available uh, right now, but you got Yoshinobu Yamamoto. You get Flaherty at, at the trade deadline. Would this season be seen maybe inside of the, the organization as a failure if they don't at least make it to the World Series, you think? Well, I think the way that most in the organization, especially those writing the checks, um, the way they look at it is if they don't win the World Series. You know, it's, it's a World Series or bust type of mentality. Not every ball club has that. There's right. a lot of ball clubs out there that are happy with a non-losing season that they'll they'll cheer for 81 and 81 and that's mediocre and that's not good that's not what the dodgers are about they want to win the world series every year they prepare to win the world series every year and if they don't win it they'll be highly disappointed that's just kind of the way it is around dodger land um so yeah i mean the, 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 they're going to have their work cut out for them in the division series no doubt they've stumbled in the division series you know many of the last few years They've got to get past that. The way that the postseason is now, Casey, it's different in a way where there's so many teams. It's more like a tournament, and I it refer is. to it as a it tournament. Is. If yeah. you're the hot team and you get in, there's no stopping you. Look at what the Tigers are doing right now. Yep. They've, and they've got the best pitcher in the American League in Tariq Skubal. Who knows what he's going to do next time out. He's going to give them a big advantage. So, you know, they knock off the AL West champion Astros, and now the Tigers are still in the tournament. They're moving on. So who knows what happens in the American League Division Series in their next round. Uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks last year, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, they got hot at the right time. They got hot right out of the shoot in game one against the Dodgers, and they just shocked Clayton Kershaw and everybody else. And and then they beat up on Bobby Miller the next night, and then over in Arizona, um, Lance Lynn was victimized, and that was it. Yes. That, that was all she wrote last year. So I think that um, if you can get hot and stay hot and do enough to win and really get going, it's kind of like the hot goaltender in the NHL. In the yeah, playoffs. you got to kind of ride that. So if you have a hot pitcher or somebody's hot with the bat, you know, my my key guy is Mookie Betts. If Mookie mm -hmm. gets, hot, I've seen it. I, I was with him in Boston for three years. So I've seen his act before in the postseason. I know what he's capable of. Um, he, he usually heats up, and I hope he heats up again. He was cold last year, and that hurt. Both he and Freddie Freeman were, were ice cold in the postseason. So if they're both hot, that's great. But the Dodgers need to get hot. They need to win games. They need to score runs. They need to pitch. They need to defend. They need to do all the things that, yeah. that, that uh, got them another division title. They do, and I think a lot of the Dodgers fans, because of injury, are worried about the starting pitching. The bullpen has been used a lot. It's been very resilient, but the Dodgers do have the offense – that have scored the most amount of runs in the National League of any team that is remaining. The Diamondbacks scored more runs than they did, but they are eliminated. So you kind of hit on it there for a second. But, it, of course, I think the Dodgers are probably going to the play the Padres first. We'll see. There's still two games to go in that series. But what are the keys for you? Uh, I know there's going to be a ton of pressure on these guys. So what are the keys for you for these guys not to feel that pressure and just relax and play like they're capable of? I think that's it. Just relax. You know, you always hear the term in baseball, try not to do too much. Yes. And if, if you were in another kind of a job, 
and you told your boss, I'm just trying not to do too much. I don't think it would be received very well. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but as far as, <laughs> but, but as far as, uh, baseball, you don't want to overdo it. Meaning don't squeeze the bat too hard. Don't yeah. Right. Get all amped up. Just do what you've done. And these guys are professionals. Uh, as long as they don't start making sawdust in their hands, like, you know, squeezing the bat too hard, get, don't worry about that stuff. Play the game the way you play the game. Play the game smartly. Uh, you know, hit situationally. You're going to see some different things, my guess is, in terms of, uh, you know, trying to advance runners and that you might not see so much in the regular season, especially in the National League now with a designated hitter. Mm -hmm. But the Dodgers are going to have to play for, you know, th th there might be a game where they have to play for one run here or there. Mm -hmm. So the strategy is going to change, and you've got to execute. Now, don't be nervous, don't be tight, but execute. That's what they've yeah. got to do. Um, so I think as long as they're relaxed, you've got some guys who are veterans. I'm curious to see how Otani's going to handle his first postseason. If it's anything like he did in the World Baseball Classic, yep. you know, watch out. If it's anything like the way he played down the stretch, I'd mm -hmm. say watch out because this man – put on the best single season I've ever seen anybody have uh, by a long way. Uh, and if he continues with that into the postseason, I think it's going to be great. I think he could he could be one of the X factors, but but I think Mookie Betts will be a key guy, especially as the game gets later. Will Smith, mm -hmm. I think, has to start hitting. Yes. And we're seeing Chris Taylor, who could be a factor off the bench. If you, if you forget the first, you know, I'd say the first uh, six and a half months of the season, now he seems to have something really going with the bat. Yeah. So, Kike. Kike has been good since he got his new glasses. Yeah. You know, he's been really he good. So and he's a good defender. Yeah. Uh you know, I've I, I have not covered the fifty fifty with Otani very much on my site. Just because I just feel like in my mind, yes, the fifty fifty is cool. We'll have plenty of time to talk about it. But I think right now Otani's so focused on winning a world championship. I think that's where he wants the entire focus, and I think that's where I admire him the most. The world he looks at him as this baseball icon. Mm -hmm. He's an international brand. Yes. You would Japan Airlines has his picture on the side of airplanes. I mean, th this guy's everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. He knows he he kind of has a, a really good sense of where he is, yeah, what he, he is supposed to do. Uh, you know, and I've been on the bus with him, I've been in the clubhouse sometimes with when you get him alone or in private. He's just like a normal guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's very. Yeah. He's quiet. He's reserved. Um, you know, I mean, occasionally he'll get on the bus. I just stick my fist out, and he gives me that. You know, he's just like everybody else. But yeah. when it comes to his brand and his fans, it's absolutely incredible. Like like nothing I've ever seen. And you'd figure he'd feel the pressure. He delivers. He's that good. And I've never, ever in my life seen a guy hit the ball as consistently hard. Yeah. Consistently square up a baseball the way that this guy does. Um, I mean, 100 miles an hour off the bat, even for ground balls a lot of the time. Uh, even his foul balls are scary. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, you know, I think the 50-50 thing was pretty awesome on his part. The fact that he, he got there in the same game, you know, his first, first at bat, Again, this was just some innocuous Thursday afternoon in South Florida. There were 17,000 people there, 15,000 of them wearing Otani jerseys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his first at bat, he gets a double, and he steals third for his 50th stolen base. I mean, you knew he was going to do it. Um, I'm trying to think who the pitcher was. My, in fact, I can tell you, I think it was Ryan Weathers, a lefty. Yep. Um, but uh, I got my scorebook Seems right Seems like here. he stole a standing up, too. Yeah. No, you know who it was? It was Edward Cabrera. That's who it was. It was a right-hander. Yeah, and he just he just walked down to third base. And then his next at bat, he gets an RBI base hit, steals second. All right, That's his second stolen base, and it's in two innings. So two at-bats in two innings. He has three at-bats in three innings. He gets the uh, two-run double. Um, then there's a weird double play, I think, or something happened. That was the next inning. And then he goes home run, home run, home run. Wow. Uh, for 49, 50, and 51. And the 50th uh, was off of uh, Mike Bauman, who's a right-hander, and Shohei went the opposite way, uh, hitting it just to the right of the bullpen out there. And, uh, you know, I was starting to think coming into the game, you know, he might have a chance if he has a monster game. I didn't think he'd have that monster of a game. 10 RBIs, 6 for 6. 
I've never seen a guy have a single game like that. And all the things that he accomplished in that game, setting a new home run record for the Dodgers, all, all kinds of things. I got a whole list of them that we were making as the game was going on, how all these records he's surpassing and things he's doing. So, oh, and oh, by the way, that same day they clinched a playoff spot. Yeah, right. They put 20 runs on the board and clinched a playoff spot. Uh, so, and that was kind of the, oh, by the way, part of the story at the end of the game. And then we had to fly back to L.A. after that, and it was a great flight. Um, but to see a man do what he's doing on the baseball field like nobody's ever done before has been remarkable to watch, been remarkable to see up close, been remarkable to chronicle, and been remarkable to call those plays. So I, I just uh, I can't say enough about what I've seen this year out of Otani. The 50-50 thing's really important. I don't know if we'll see anybody do that again because of the combination of power and speed that most players have. They do not have what he has. Yeah, maybe uh, a second book, another book coming around the corner. I know you wrote COVID Curveball over the COVID experiences in, in 2020. So that would be a, a, a great a great topic to write about again. So tell us about the COVID Curveball, curveball book, what you got going on with that and all those types of things. Well, we kind of put that one to bed. It's still out there. It's available on Amazon and in some bookstores still. But it was all about the 2020 season and, uh, you know, no fans in the stands, you know, us broadcasting remotely. Uh, just an insider's look at what was happening, what was going on behind the scenes. Uh, where was Rick Monday living during that? Uh, <laughs> he was actually in the Dodger Stadium parking lot, and I was in a hotel downtown. So, it was, so there was a lot of weird things that went on, all the testing that went on. And, you know, the, they had to develop an app just for us. To, we had to fill it out every day just to be able to get clearance to enter the ballpark grounds. And it, Crazy. This, all the challenges that, that were there. And then to see them ultimately win the World Series. So I've chronicled that from the 2020 season. Um, there is a book that's being written on this season and about Otani. Bill Plunkett from the Orange County Register oh, nice. uh, was contracted prior to the season to do that. And um, so he, he will have uh, his name on the title of that book. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading that since uh, I was right there too. And I see Bill around all the time. And uh, I'm anxious to to read this when it finally is is done. I can't wait to read it either. I rode COVID curveball. I read COVID curveball from start to finish. I think three different times. It was oh, wow. it was a, it was a great Thank read, man. It, it was just absolutely awesome. So hey, this has been such a great honor, Tim Neverd. I know I talked to you a couple of years ago. You're so kind to give away your time like this and come on to shows like here on Dodgers Daily. So hey, thank you so much, Tim Neverd, and go Dodgers! Right? Yeah, go Dodgers. Looking forward to. Looking forward to seeing how it goes. Uh, I'm done for the season, by the way. I was told I'm not broadcasting the postseason. So uh, I'm going to be watching from either the stands or afar the rest of the way. But uh, uh, it's going to be – I'm hopeful it'll be a good run. I think if we get past the division series, uh, we certainly could go all the way. And I hope that uh, we have a parade here in downtown Los Angeles coming up later in the month. Fantastic. Tim Neverett, play-by-play voice of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Thanks so much for joining. All right, Casey. Anytime. Thanks.